Next up is the caveman from Gaia's Naval himself. It's the prehistoric. Despite the red tech in Jurassic Beat, the prehistoric is actually in a yellow. You can tell because when I swang it was yellow. I can show it off here. There, it is yellow. Uh, we do have access to a lot of Jurassic Beats, which inflicts confusion on all of our enemies, although it doesn't always work that well. We have four of them total, one at level one, two at level two, and one at level three as well. Outside of that, all we have is turn yellow, so it's good for damage, but not too much more than that. Let's show off Jurassic Beat and see if we can't confuse anything. <laughs> and we have finally made it to Chronopolis, where we can find some of the best doppelgangs in the game. First up, we have the Gizmatoid. Gizmatoid is in a color red and has access to a lot of its tech in high beam. We have two of them at level one. We have two more of them at level two, two more of them at level three, and one more at level four. So we have access to seven high beams and a strengthen at level four. It's time to show off the best thing about a Gizmatoid, a high beam. Next up is the most common guard around Chronopolis, the Arrow Guard. The Arrow Guard is in me blue and actually doesn't have any text, but I think it makes up for it in the elements that it does have. We have Ice Blast minus three at level one. We have access to two of those. At level two, we get another Ice Blast and a Cure All. Those things are pretty rare. At level three, we have another Cure All and another Ice Blast. At level four, we get an Ice Lance and another Cure All. At level five, we get another Ice Lance and another Cure All. And finally, at level six, we get a Vigora. So although we don't have a tech, this thing can be very, very useful even until the end of the game. Next up is the doppelganger that gave me the most trouble this time. It hangs out with the arrow guard. It's the gyro blade. The gyro blade is one of those rare innate white doppelgangs and it doesn't have a tech but it does have some nice elements to cover for that we start off with a recover all minus two at level one that's awesome that's where i keep my recover alls uh, we also have access to a photon beam and a photon ray which aren't as good we have another photon beam at level two and a holy healing at level two that is always nice to see. Level three brings us another photon ray and another holy healing. At level four, we get a recover all and a photon beam. Level five gives us another photon ray and level six gives us a magma gate. So not necessarily the best on offense, but if you need healing, the gyro blade is for you. Then we head back to the El Nido Triangle where we can find the puffy, the pufffish. Puffy is innate yellow, and it is powerful, and it needs to be, because there's not too much else going for it. It has another compact 
element grid full of needleworks. We have three at level one, two at level two, and one at level three. Let's hope it does good work because it's the only thing the Puffy has going for it on the element grid. We take a trip back to Fort Gagonia for whatever reason. In Homeworld in particular, I believe we can find a gurgoyle, the upgraded gremlin. The gurgoyle once again is powerful and doesn't have too much else going for it. Uh, the element grid is very small. At level one, all we have is a turn yellow. At level two, we have the Gurgoyle's tech, which is Giddy Breath, but we do have access to it three times. It can cause dizzy. And at level three, we have high res. So it's powerful, but there are more powerful things out there. We do have access to it kind of early compared to some of the more powerful things, but ultimately, Giddy Breath better make up for it. It doesn't. Next we head over to Terra Tower where we can find the Mike's O Might Seat. The Mike's O Might Seat is once again a rare white innate doppelganger. But this one's primarily more focused on attack, whereas the gyroblade was more on healing. At level one, we have a meteorite and a turn white. At level two, we have more meteorites. At level three, we have purify and strong-minded. At level four, we have meteor showers. At level five, we have a holy healing and an anti-black. And at level six, we have Magnegate and Weak-Minded. So there's still a lot of buffs and debuffs. There's some healing, but there are more white attack elements if that's what you're looking for. Next up from Chronopolis, we have one of the most powerful doppelgangs in the game, especially the first time through. We have the Combot. The Combot is a very powerful innate red doppelgang with access to two different techs, which are the only things on the element grid. At level one, we get Gunner Getcha. At level two, we get another Gunner Getcha. At level three, we have a third Gunner Getcha. At level four, we get Go Ballistic, which does hit all enemies, even though I only have the one. And at level five, we get a second Go Ballistic. So we're going to start by using Gunner Getcha. Then we will show off Go Ballistic. And finally, we have the three enemies that we can fight at the bend of time. These are not available your first time through the game. They're only available through New Game Plus, but we can show off Slash first. Slash is a very powerful blue innate doppelgang with access to Cure at level one. Lots of cures going on here. At level two, though, we get our first tech for Slash, Wind Slash. Slices foe with the wind made by swinging sword. At level three, we get an Ice Lance. At level four, we get the second tech for Slash, Dash Slash. 
charge straight at foe for a very powerful cut. At level 5, we get Ice Blast. At level 6, we get two Cure Pluses. Kind of high for a Cure Plus, but I'll accept it. And at level 7, we do have access to an Iceberg, in case you want to use some high-level magic. First, though, Wind Slash. Then, Dash Slash. Next up is the second enemy from the Bend of Time. It's time to show off Flea. Flea is innate red and is kind of the manipulator of the entire doppelgang list. At level one, we have all the turn spells. So we have turn white, turn black, green, yellow, blue, and red. We can turn our enemy any color we want. At level two, we have a fireball and a weaken. At level three, we have Flea's tech, the stare. It's a secret, but it does hit all enemies. At level four, we get a fire pillar and a strengthen. At level five, we have access to all the anti-spells, so we can seal each color as we go along. We can turn them any color, we can seal any color. Flea is good for manipulating, what do you want me to say? At level six, we have an Inferno and a 99. But I think we all want to see the stare. And our final doppelgang is our final enemy from the bend of time. The final friend from Chrono Trigger. It's Ozzy. Our final doppelgang today is in a green and unfortunately does not have any text for me to show off, but we do have quite a large element grid. It's not my favorite though. At level one, we have a bat eye, a heal, and an infoscope. At level two, we have another infoscope, a low res, and an eagle eye. At level three, we get another infoscope, a high res, and a bush basher. At level four, we get a bush whacker, another high res, and another infoscope. At level five, we get another infoscope and two more bush bashers. At level six, we finally get something good. We get a heal all and a carnivore. I love to see both of those. I just wish there were more of them. And at level seven, we get a magnegate and a fizznegate. So as you can see, Ozzy is built around defense. But now that we have shown off all of the doppelgangs, that is going to do it for these bonus episodes of Let's Play Chrono Cross. I've been Baller Scoob. I've been joined as always by the original doppelganger herself, Sprig. Hope you guys have enjoyed these parts. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.